Here's how to build an authentic Finnish sauna in the tropics. They're here in Gordon Vale in far north Queensland at the northern part of Australia. So we're very close to the equator. We're here, we're from Finland. My name is Pyrrö, that's Teemu. And we're about to build a sauna here. This video is going to be about the decisions that need to go in place, that need to go right if you want your sauna to be an authentic Finnish sauna. For us Finns, Going to the sauna, it's all about the experience of the lolu, which is the thing when you throw water on the rocks and the, the water evaporates, we create lolu. That is the whole point of going to the sauna. And every single decision that you make when building your sauna is going to influence how pleasant that lolu is going to be. All the way from what kind of an element you should choose, what kind of materials you're going to use, how your airflow is going to work. All these things are going to be critical. And a lot of people are really overlooking these things. So these are the things that we're going to be focusing on in this video. Now, obviously, I have no clue how to build anything. So that's why I brought my best friend all the way from Finland, Teemu Virkkunen from Apujoukko, which is a fantastic construction company in Espo. Teemu has donated his time. He's uh, amazingly promised to come and help us to actually make this dream come true. And he's a complete professional. So Teemu, what's our first step? What are we doing here? with this sauna obviously we have kind of you know we've ripped it apart yeah. and we've kind of just we've just got the skeleton left here yeah. so what is the number one thing that we're going to focus on and what we're doing right now we're going to seal uh, we're going to seal the concrete yeah and after that we're gonna uh, redo the roof yeah yeah so, that's the first step so we're going to start by sealing the concrete so we we did that decision because normally what you could have done, we could have obviously created a floor like uh, from timber yeah. to the sauna. But the problem is that we don't have that much height to play with. If we were not going to use the existing skeleton at all, then we obviously could have just lifted the floor and then we would have also needed to lift the roof. But now we're going to keep the roof at the same height. And this is the number one, the first lesson about having a good sauna experience is that you need to have enough height between where you're sitting yeah. and the roof. Do you know from the top of your head what is exactly the distance that you should go for? Yeah, it's a, is it approximately 110 centimeters. 100, 110 centimeters from... From you, the bench. To the rooftop. Beautiful. Yeah. So from where you're sitting from the bench to the roof should be 110 centimeters yeah. for an optimal sauna experience. That's right. Beautiful. So because of that reason, we just opted for, you know what, guess what? We're just going to go with just the concrete. We're going to get to work. Holy shit, man, it's coming to life. Yeah, man. <laughs> what a savage. This guy's making it happen. It's it's crazy. It's 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 all him by the way. Like I haven't I haven't touched a thing. It's it's incredible like this just wizardry that you're able to do with some timber. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't feel like it in yeah. here. Yeah, well, uh, that's right, because it's been a bit of a challenge because carpentry in Finland is very different to carpentry here in Australia. Like, we've done so many trips to Bunnings and what did you say? It's it's like shopping in space. Yeah, it felt like that, yeah. for sure. 
So I thought we'd talk about one interesting feature we have here. I've noticed that we've actually got a little bit of a space between the wall and the floor. Like we're literally going to be leaving it open. Of course, we'll put a screen there so that like rodents and wildlife can't crawl their way into the sauna. But why have we decided to actually leave a bit of a gap in the bottom of the sauna? So the airflow can like, the air can move and it can like dry easily. Besides, like it's, isn't it, uh, it, it's good for the quality of the lolu? Yes, yes, of course. It's important for, uh, for a good lolu to have like a good airflow in yeah. the sauna. So we, we need the air, fresh air to coming in from the bottom and then we need air to be going out from the top as well. Yeah, that's right. Fantastic. Not far off from now, we've got the main frame is pretty much done. Yeah, pretty much. And the next part is going to be, are we going to do the exterior cladding or the interior first? Exterior first, yeah. That's what I'm going to start to do next. Fantastic. Let's keep rocking. And that's when things got really interesting and I had to make the first phone call to the distributor who I bought the heater from. As we were loading the heater into the sauna so that Demo could take some measurements and identify the exact location of where the heater would go and we pulled it out from its packaging, we noticed that it had actually been damaged. So there was a pretty big dent on the right hand side when you're looking face on into the heater and then also there'd been some impact on the back side of it. Luckily, this impact had only been to the outer shell, which is completely cosmetic, has nothing to do with the functioning of the heater. But regardless, I got on the phone and I called the distributor and I told him what we had discovered. And he was very apologetic and he quickly offered that he is gonna send me a whole new heater for free. And that was very generous and I was taken aback, but I declined his offer because we had actually realized that we needed something else. Because of the fact that we had decided to use the existing skeleton of the shed and not build a completely new skeleton, there was a very specific location where we had to put the heater onto so that we could actually still get a flue and a chimney through the roof without having to then touch the structural timber. So because of the fact that the, this location was very close to the walls, we had realized that we actually can't put the heater there because there are very specific safety requirements for when it comes to where you can actually position your heater because the heater runs incredibly hot when you heat it properly. And that is an obvious fire hazard. It's very dangerous to put it too close to the wall. So the manufacturer has given these very specific dimensions that you need to have this amount of space between the heater and this amount of space between the flue and the wall. And because of the fact that we had to put the heater into this specific location, we did not have enough space. So luckily there is a work around this, which is this protective sheath. This protective sheath takes away the need for these safety dimensions. So it cuts the safety dimensions dramatically to only a fraction of what you would need under normal circumstances without the sheath. And also I realized that this sheath is actually going to cover the cosmetic damage that had taken place to the outer shell of my heater. So I proposed to the distributor that could I instead have this protective sheath for free? And he agreed. So he shipped me one and and it was happy days. And that's a pretty good segue to talking about the heater. Why did I choose this specific heater? And this is of course a very, very important topic for when it comes to the actual experience of using the sauna and the experience of the load. So I chose the Harvia manufacturer, I should say Harvia in, in Finnish, but in English you would call it Harvia. Harvia is the gold standard manufacturer of sauna heaters and saunas in Finland. I've been to a lot of saunas in my life and in my experience an overwhelming majority of positive experiences when the Lolu has been really really good it's been with a Harvia manufactured 
heater. So because of that reason, I chose Harvia. Now, what about the model? Well, choosing the Pro 20 model, it was a pretty easy decision because I like my Lolu nice and hot. Nothing is worse for me if I go to the sauna and it's not hot enough. So it would have been absolutely heartbreaking to drag them all the way across the world here and build a sauna and then not be able to get the room hot enough for my liking. So because of that reason, we decided that, you know what, we're gonna go with a little bit more horsepower, although it's probably gonna be a bit of an overkill for the size of the space. But you know what, you rather have the ability to put a bit more wood into the heater and crank it really, really hot to my liking, as opposed to going with a smaller heater and then actually not having the capacity and the capability to get it hot enough for my liking. So because of that reason, we went with the Harvia Pro 20 heater. All right, so here we are inside the sauna. You can see Temo has already put a couple of rows of the interior cladding. We chose to use Polonia timber for the interior cladding. And that decision was made for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was the cheapest option because actually Polonia is the fastest growing, I don't know if it's the fastest growing tree, but at least the fastest growing tree that's used for timber in the world. So that's why it is very affordable. Secondly, Polona is actually very light. So it's really easy to work with because of that reason. Thirdly, it's water resistant and also apparently termite resistant. So because of these reasons, it was a very obvious decision for the interior cladding here in the sauna. Other, other options would have been uh, Western red cedar is used here in Australia apparently a lot but it was a lot more expensive. And yeah, the other cool benefit of Polonia, by the way, is that it's uh, not very conductive to heat. So usually when you're inside a sauna and you're throwing a lot of Lolu and you're making the sauna very hot, if you touch the wall, you're gonna get burnt because the, the wood conducts heat and it gets really, really hot. But Polonia does not do that. So Polonia should actually be very cool to touch, even though the sauna is very hot and the Lolu is gonna be absolutely cranky. So the next steps here are gonna be, obviously to finish the interior cladding, make the roof, and that is when things are gonna get really, really tricky for Tamu because he's really gonna have to stretch his engineering and his carpentering mind and muscles because we're gonna to have to install the actual heater and we're going to have to, there's gonna be a chimney that's gonna to have to go through the roof. So there's gonna be a hole made for the, the chimney into the cladding and also into the sheet metal roof. And that is something that he hasn't done before, but I'm sure that if there's someone who's gonna figure it out, it's gonna be him. So let's keep rocking.
And just like that, it was time to bring the centerpiece of the show, the heater, into the sauna and for Temu to begin the most challenging part of the entire building project, which is the installation of the heater, the flue and the chimney. When I bought the flue, I ordered it from the same distributor where I ordered the heater from. I was sold a stainless steel chimney in a sleek black finish. When we pulled it out from the box, we very quickly realized that this flue kit that had been delivered was not the same that I had been sold and that had been advertised on the website. First of all, it was supposed to be stainless steel. The flue that we got, the internal part, like the, the black part that comes from the actual heater. Yes, that was stainless steel. And yes, that was sleek black finish. However, this insulation part that is highly visible, that number one, it wasn't stainless steel. And number two, it definitely wasn't sleek black. We thought we'd ignore the aesthetic issue for a while and we tried to actually install it. And we very quickly identified a problem with the insulation. The insulation cannot sit in the heater because the heater runs incredibly hot and we need the rocks on top of the heater. There should be something that would stop the insulation from dropping all the way down to the heater. But there was nothing. So if it became very clear that clearly this flue had not been designed specifically for this purpose. It's probably just the generic one that's gonna work with most fireplaces, but it was not going to work without any kinds of modifications with this specific task. So I took out my phone again and I called the distributor and I said that, hey man, I think that you might have actually sent me the wrong flu kit by accident. So he said he would look into it and he would get back to me within a couple of hours. So he called me back in a couple of hours and he said that he had indeed confirmed that we had been sent to correct flu kit. And he said that we were trying to install it in the wrong way. He said that we should install it in the following way. The black portion, the stainless steel part, is the only thing that's supposed to be visible. And this gray part, the insulation, is supposed to be so far up in the roof that is actually not visible inside the sauna. Now, this had a huge problem with it and there was no way that we could install it in this way because of the fact that we didn't have enough space between the heater and the walls. Remember those safety dimensions? In the installation manual of the heater it very specifically says that if you're using the protective sheath, meaning that if you're very close to the walls, that means that the bottom part of the insulation of the flue must begin below the top edge of the protective sheath so that the stainless steel pipe that's running incredibly hot is not exposed to the walls because it's a huge fire hazard. That thing is running so, so hot. So in other words, he was saying that if I wanted to get the aesthetic look that I wanted of just having a black flue coming from the heater, I should install it in this very dangerous manner. He clearly probably just didn't know what he was really talking about, to be honest. The other issue that we had was that Demo's time here in Australia was running out and we didn't have enough time to wait for a proper flu that had actually been designed for this specific purpose to arrive here in Gordon Vest. So once again, we weighed up the functionality versus the aesthetics and we decided that, you know what? Screw the aesthetics, let's just get it up there. So Temu flexed his engineering mind and he came up with a great idea. So he drilled a couple screws through the insulation, which now then stopped it from dropping all the way down into the heater. So problem one was done and then he completed the installation of the heater, the flue and the chimney in a safety dimension compliant manner. And he did a great job, but I wasn't completely satisfied because of the fact that I had been sold a flu that had not been specifically designed for the purpose that it was sold me for. And 
it did not match what was advertised in the, on the website when it comes to the material and the color of it. So I pressed these points with the distributor and he agreed to give me half of my money back for the flu, which is $500, which was nice. So now that the flu and the heater had been installed properly, we were really, really close. All we were missing was the seats and the door that incredibly, to me, to my mind, it's completely mind blowing, but Demo actually built these things by himself with his bare hands from some timber that we got. That was absolutely wild. I chipped in and I did something that I was capable of, which is to put the rocks into the heater, which is not exactly rocket science. And just like that, we were done. Well then, here we are. Shut it down. <sighs> Unbelievable. Yeah, it was battle. It was battle? Yeah. What do you think was the biggest challenge? I don't know, just everything. No, no tools, first of all. And then all the materials are different yeah it's just so different yeah it's done it's done we <laughs> you overcame the challenges yeah we did but man like the finished thing like this is absolutely incredible i am so happy That's I, I, this is like <laughs> way above and beyond of like what i even imagined that That's this thing good. could look like it's good to hear I'm so happy, man. I hope it lasts yeah. for a long time. Oh, it will, definitely. Yeah. Bro, thank you so much. No worries. Should we give it a crack? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> So it's been two weeks since the sauna was completed and I've been using it pretty much every day. There was a couple days break when I was uh, interstate so I didn't have access to my sauna and man I was missing it so much because it's been so good. I can genuinely report that it is one of the best Lotus that I have ever experienced in my life. It's like the Lolu, it's like Oh, that's a gecko, by the way. It's behind someone. The Lolu is a very humid. It's very soft, and it's it feels like a warm hug. It's like a full body warm hug. Like sometimes when you have an electric heater and you throw Lolu, it can almost feel like a bit of a sting. You might get a sting in your ears, and you get a sting on your shoulders and you might actually not even feel anything in the rest of your body. But with this heater and with this sauna setup, it's a, it's a really, it's a full body experience. It's very, very pleasant. One of the best, if not the best, that I've ever experienced in my life. And I've been to a lot of saunas. I'm very happy with the decision of going with the Harvia Pro 20 heater. It's got a bit more horsepower on it. it might 
be a little bit of an overkill for this size space but I do like my loader very hot and I've been testing it out a little bit and I'm very happy to report that I can definitely make that thing very very hot and the loader is very hot even for my liking. It's really difficult for me to find words to describe like, what it means to me that demo came all the way to the other side of the planet and he spent a very large portion of his time here in Australia, his holiday time, in building this thing for me. Like, it's incredible. Like, I don't know. It's, it's pretty hard to top that one. It's definitely safe to say that I, I owe him big, big time, but at the same time, like, I have no idea if I'm gonna be ever able to live up to that and and do something for him that's of that magnitude so man it's just amazing and that is how we build an authentic sauna in the tropics if you've enjoyed this video make sure to like the video and if you enjoy sauna related topics in general make sure to subscribe to the channel because if you can tell saunas are a little bit of a passion of mine so now that i've got one i'm going to be making plenty of sauna related content and if you know someone who'd be interested in knowing in how to actually build a traditional Finnish sauna make sure to share this video with them thank you so much for watching and listening i'll see you in the next one